Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Creating Essence. I am Megan and I'm so glad you're here today. We are giving you a tour of our homeschool room today. I did a big clean out and tour of our room last year. I will put a link to that in the info box below as well as in an iCard. Actually, it's probably over there because it's always the opposite of what I think. <laughs> so you can see what it looked like uh, in years past, but this year we finally got things together in a way that I have wanted it since we bought this house four and a half years ago. Up until now, it's always been a great storage room. It, it had a little bit of workspace, but mostly was just good for storing our supplies and organizing things the way we needed them to be for great usage. This year, we finally were able to just overhaul the room and make it a great space, not only for storing and organizing our supplies, but for learning and being and working in. I have a couple pictures of it in progress that I will put up right here for you. Basically, I sent them to my husband the day we were doing the major clean out and detail clean of it to show him what a hot mess things were in progress. Here is what it looks like now. The biggest change is probably the futon we have here. We wanted to have a great space for people to stay when they visited. So I did a whole lot of shopping, review reading, and I found a really highly recommended, well-reviewed futon. We also got a memory foam topper for when it does become a bed to give it a little extra comfort, but it is a really nice futon that reviews say hold up well over the long haul. So I was really excited about that. Another big change is this big mama jama of a cube organizer. Now this little guy over here, we have had for about 11 years now. And we have loved it so much and found it so handy and useful that we decided to get another one. When I was shopping for them, I saw the big one. And with seven people in a family, basically bigger is better most of the time. It is a 16 cube organizer. It is really sturdy. I like this thicker frame compared to this smaller one we have here, which is perfectly adequate for this size, but I knew with this much more space, this thicker frame was absolute a bonus. We have baskets up here, mostly of craft supplies. This one has various kinds of flashcards in it, but most of this is craft supplies that I want to make sure stay out of the littlest fingers in our family. This was a find in the Target dollar spot a couple of years ago, and I super love it. This is felted wool that was actually handcrafted by someone. I purchased it at a fiber festival that was held here in Central Virginia, and I have a video of that fiber festival as well as when I bought it down there in the info box that I'll share with you all. We have our flag, because every good schoolroom has a flag, and these are basically the school supplies that should not be eaten. This cupboard, this is an older one, but it's a necessary piece, so we keep it around. We have the paper goods type supplies, craft supplies, and then a whole bunch of games. We keep this with a toddler lock on it because, well, I have a three-year-old. Now how we organized this cube organizer is basically for our best function. Each of these is a basket belonging to an individual child. It has all of their school books as well as their what we call planner binder here. If you wanna see that, I make them a new one each year. Everybody has their own. They pick what they want on the front of it each year. But these baskets give them some ownership over their school books, their binder, and keeping them in good order. Right here, and a shelf down so it can be reached, is my littlest guy's basket. Now, he is not even preschool age, so it is super empty. This is a little accordion folder that I put printables in, and I just do basic things like numbers and letters. So when he says, Mama, I wanna do schoolwork too, we get some of those out. This basket is 
full of some of his favorite books to read. Just different easy reader, little kid things that he really, really loves. And again, it's in his reach. He can put it away himself and it just helps him to know that things have a place. This, these are some random supplies we use regularly like moon sand and some workbooks. The, this has puzzles in it that the kids can get out and play with regularly. And then these, this is kind of out of necessity. This is a box where when I find random pieces that go to different things, I just toss them in here. And then every once in a while I tell the kids, hey, go clean out that bin and put things away where they belong. We have Marble Run, which is one of the most played with toys around here, right next to Legos. And this is sort of my supply box. There's the three hole punch, and then I have this box full of things like tape, rubber bands, post-its, three by five cards, things of that nature. Basically the boring, not colorful stuff. And then the bottom is still empty. If you can imagine, we didn't even fill it up. Right here by the door is what we call our group subjects basket. Now, if you've seen our curriculum videos, I will put them in the info box below so you can check them out if you would like. We have stuff for history and science here. And these are the things that we do all together. So when I say grab the group subjects basket, everything that we could possibly need is in here. In this accordion folder, I keep the copies of things that I need, activity sheets that go with the day's lesson. Coming around here, we have our maps on the walls, of course. And then on this rainbow cart, we have up here three boxes of colored pencils and pencils. This, these are folders of our Compassion Kids that we sponsor through Compassion International, and we do a lot of stuff incorporating them with our schoolwork the book stand for typing lessons. And then each of these drawers has a different sort of thing in it. This is my corrections books, the teacher keys to texts. These are our music books, clipboards. These are the painting books and things for the little kids. These are stickers of all kinds. This is kind of random things like highlighters, rulers, erasers, protractors. These are math manipulatives. These are just little workbooks that we got mostly from the, taller, from the Target dollar spot, but workbooks that are for all ages for us to draw from at times. We have our typing curriculum books. headphones. These are our wipe clean books. We have them on all sorts of different subjects. They're basically like books made of dry erase board and they have dry erase markers so they can be used over and over and over again. And then the next level of all about spelling that we'll need in the future. Over here on this cube organizer we have our history books, these are have all different subjects, but they are specifically related to history topics. Same here, but science. On this, we have activity books, whether it's origami or science experiments or paper dolls, things like that. And then we have some language and grammar reference books. Over here, we have Play-Doh toys. These are some more bigger reference books like our Southwestern Advantage uh, math books, Tales of Famous Heroes, Biblical World Atlas, Encyclopedia of World History, and then our next uh, history curriculum we'll be using. In this cube, we have what's called the preschool bin. These are all sorts of manipulatives and things for my preschool age slash toddler son to just stay busy with when he needs some distraction when the rest of us are busy. And then some really easy reader type of books. That one is empty. That one is DVDs and games. And this is actually a huge bag of seashells of all kinds and sand because we love to vacation to the beach and we always bring these home and use them for all kinds of projects and they just needed their own box. We have our big bookshelf with our abacus and globe on top. 
We have our all about spelling curriculum, some reading curriculum books, and then just all different books on all the different shelves. And on the bottom here, we have our coloring and painting books that the kids can use anytime. And this is a box that is kind of our in progress box. If we're doing something and we don't have time to finish it, we just put whatever we're working with in here and slide it there and it's put away for now. We have our coffee table here, which has a stepper under there that pulls out and is the perfect little seat for a nice low or squatting workspace. And of course we have the futon. Up here I found this at Joanne Fabrics in their spring clearance. It is a whiteboard calendar, but it's made of glass. So it's not gonna stain or scratch and it cleans off so much easier. This was like $55 regular price and I got it for 10. So I was really excited about that. And then we just have a good old fashioned wall clock up here because I don't want my kids to only know how to read digital, basically. And we have a very inexpensive stand lamp that has been around for years. This is just here to give it a little more lighting. And then this hangs right over the futon to give good lighting for handiwork, like hand stitching or knitting and reading that the kids might do when it's a bit darker at night. Then up here, we have more of these adorable wool felt creatures. I don't know if you can see with the backlighting, but this is an adorable puffer fish. And then we have a mobile with some jellyfish. And this guy is a super cool octopus. And they're all hanging from up there in front of the window. And that is it for our homeschool room tour. I'm so excited with how this turned out and how we were able to really minimize, get rid of a lot of the excess stuff that we were keeping around just in case and make it into a much more functional room for our family. It was such a long time that we did not even have a school room. We just had a hutch in our dining room where we kept all of our school supplies. And I am so grateful for this extra space now because I know not all families, especially not all large families, have this luxury. Thank you all for sticking around today, my friends. I would love to hear how you have your homeschool supplies set up. Is it in your dining room or your living room or do you have a dedicated school room like us? If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. It tells YouTube we are making good content so they'll show us to other people. And subscribe to our channel to hang out for more. We'll see you again tomorrow.